Welcome to Wesley Methodist Church and the last of our four services in Advent. We pray that you will be blessed as you join us in worship of the God who came into the world he made, lived a perfect human life in the person of Jesus Christ, died on a cross for our sins, rose again to eternal life and will return in glory to make everything new. Advent means coming. And the season of Advent is the four weeks leading up to Christmas. Christmas is when we celebrate Jesus in his incarnation as a human baby. In this fourth week of Advent, we remember the unique role of Mary, his mother, entrusted with caring for him during his childhood and adolescence. Her example of trust, obedience and faithful service is a model for us all. During Advent, we traditionally light candles to symbolise Jesus as the light of the world, coming to shed light on our darkness and to show us the love of God. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The Virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The prophets had a lot to say about the future birth, life and death of the Messiah. Isaiah in particular t talks vividly about the light that will shine in a dark world with the coming of the incarnate God. In the following well-known verses, Isaiah looks forward not just to the birth of a human baby, but to the return of Christ in his risen power and glory and the eternal reign of peace and justice that will come about. Isaiah 9 verses 2 to 7 The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you 
as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The birth of Jesus to Mary is such a familiar story that the enormity of what God accomplished through her can be missed. In the words of Charles Wesley, our God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man. The maker of the universe started his human life by being born. With the taint of illegitimacy, probably in poverty and in difficult circumstances. But he had two enormous advantages, humanly speaking, his mother and his father. Both were chosen by God to receive a unique commission and both put their own feelings, interests and preferences aside and submitted to the call. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 to 38 In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
The Christmas story of the birth of Jesus to Mary has huge significance for us. Why did he have to be born to a human mother? Because God wanted a whole family of people who would be made perfect, just as he was perfect, a family for which he was the model. He received our human nature from his mother Mary. He experienced human life in all its weakness and he went to the cross to die for us, to free us from the power of sin and death. And he is alive to strengthen us in our weakness and suffering. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of the salvation perfect through what he suffer, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, he says. I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I, and the children of God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too share in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were upheld in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, that he might make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, and he is able to help those who are being tempted. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 10 to 18. Quite a few years ago, the students of Mefsoc, that's the University Methodist Society, performed a sketch which was a parody of a school nativity play. Mary, memorably, was a girl of few words. The angel Gabriel came along to her. Fear not, I come from God. That's nice, said Mary. You're going to have a baby. That's nice. He's going to be called Jesus. That's nice. And so on. It was great fun, and quite unbiblical, of course. Gentle Mary, meek and mild, isn't who we see in the Bible. She was quite a robust character, as other stories featuring her make clear. Just think of the time she went to Jerusalem when Jesus was 12 years old and the stir that caused. Yes, Mary was overawed. Who wouldn't be? Even if Gabriel didn't appear all shining white and big wings, he was plainly impressive. And what he had to say was hardly an everyday piece of news. But once over the shock, Mary held herself together with her response, which amounts to, well, come on, let's get this straight, shall we? Then she quickly grasped her part in God's plan. May it be to me, as you have said, she came back with. Submitting to God's will, yes, but revealing Mary's inner strength. She got an important job to play. That, of course, is the whole point of Luke's account. Mary was important, and that's why she gets our attention today. But Luke's primary focus was upon Jesus. From conception to resurrection and ascension, Luke directs our attention to Jesus and the fulfilment of God's promise. This was the promise given through the, through the many means, not least the prophets. As we, as we have seen in the passage which we read from Isaiah, Here's the promise of Messiah coming to the world 
and it was spelt out in terms almost as explicit as you can get. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this, the prophecy ends. The zeal we see in the encounter between Mary and Gabriel. So in Luke's focus on Jesus, we get Gabriel doing most of the talking when he came to see Mary. He told her who the child would be that she was to carry, how he would fit into God's plan and promise. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, just as Isaiah's prophecy had said. Of the greatness of his government and peace there shall be no end. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God, continued Gabriel. That takes us on to the passage from the letter to the Hebrews. The writer of this letter explains who this Holy One, this Son of God, must be. He is the one who, he says, will bring many sons to glory. That is, he will guide us and he will rescue us from the mess, the degradation and the sin of this world. To do this, Jesus had to become human, to suffer and to die, to identify with us completely. He, says Hebrews, was of the same human family as us, and he could call us brothers. Now that is awe inspiring, isn't it? I mean, just think that Jesus, the Son of God, God incarnate in the world, wants to call us brothers and sisters. Awe inspiring was just the reaction we saw in Mary. She might not have grasped the full picture. It needed a lot of hindsight for the writer of Hebrews to put it together in the way that he did. To explain that for God's rescue plan to work, he had to be one among us. And all because God so loves the world. God so loves the world and the people he created. The part of the rescue plan started with Mary. prayers are the collects for the Advent season. God our Redeemer, you chose the Virgin Mary to be the mother of our Lord and Saviour. Fill us with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in our salvation. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. All-powerful God, let the splendour of your glory rise in our hearts like the dawn, that the darkness of night may, might be scattered, and the coming of your only Son may reveal us as the children of the light. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And now we give you thanks, because in Christ's coming among us, the day of deliverance has dawned, and through him you will make all things new. Amen. And now a blessing. May Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill us with his grace to trust his promises. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.